I'm honored to share with you a few things about Mike. I met Mike when he and his family moved to Freeport when he was in the fifth grade at Shay Long Elementary. We were about 10 years old at that time. And our teacher was Mrs. Evans, for those of you who may remember her. Anytime Mike would introduce me to a colleague, a friend, or a family member, he would always say, hi, I want you to meet my friend Cleta. We've known each other since fifth grade. He was very proud of that, and that is something to be proud of, is to have someone be a friend for that long. After high school, we lost touch and only saw each other at reunions until Linda and he moved to Houston. And then we would occasionally meet for a Halloween party or something. Um, somewhere in my mementos, I found a little calendar. It had his birthday in it, and after I saw it, well, I made a point of calling him for his birthday. And a couple of times I called him, and I didn't hear back from him, so I thought, well, it's not that important to him, so I could call him. And then the next time he saw me at a high school reunion, he said, Cleta, you don't call me anymore for my birthday. So, of course, I started calling him again for his birthday. Um, after his dad passed away and we found out that Mike had cancer, we made a point of staying more in touch with each other. He would uh, tell me about his doctor's appointments, and we would occasionally have lunch. And on one of those lunch occasions, we were at the Olive Garden here in Houston, and uh, some military guys came in, and they were sitting across from us. And Mike looked at me, and he said, you know, I think I need to pick up their tab. And I said, are you sure? And he said, yeah. So we got the waiter's attention, and he paid their tab. And, of course, after they had finished eating, they all came over and thanked him. And it was just such a proud moment for me. And I just, that's the Mike I knew, the most generous and just thoughtful man. Um, a lot of our conversations were about sports, but mostly his family, and he loved you guys more than anything. Um, the last time I saw Mike was in January, he called me from the hospital and asked if I could come and stay one night with him. So, of course, I went up and we had a, a nice little time talking about classmates because our reunion is coming up on 35th of June. And so he was asking me about some of his classmates, and we stayed up yakking for a while until we fell asleep. And, Later on, um, a nurse came in and woke us up, and we started watching the Australian Open because, you know, Mike loved tennis. And uh, then the, a little bit later on, when we woke up again, uh, after the doctors came by and visited with him, we were playing poker because I didn't know how to play, and he thought he needed me to know how to play. <laughs> so even in his toughest hours, he was um, truly still enjoying life and making sure that other people around him loved his life as well. I do have some uh, comments from classmates that I had asked uh, them to email me, so I'm going to try to make this short. But many had just some wonderful things to say about him, and I didn't know how to break it apart, so just bear with me. Um, Missy Pison Savannah, I will miss your beautiful smile. Pam Dean Washington, many prayers to the Harvard family. Look to the hills from whence come as your help. Pam Love Shook. Living down the street from my growing up was always an adventure. We had great fun playing football, basketball, and just hanging out. When we put a for sale sign up in our yard, we would wake up in the mornings to find it turned around. I have a sneaking suspicion that Mike may have had something to do with that. He was a great friend who was, will always have a special place in my heart. Love you. Get heaven ready for the rest of us. Nancy Matula Gale. You know, I grew up about six houses down the block from him on 10th Street. He was a very good buddy to me. He and I went to homecoming and other dances together because we typically were not dancing or dating anyone else. We were each other's default dates, but we always had fun. In college, we used to meet back in Freeport over breaks and go dancing. Susan Hayes Neal, Mike was such a great guy. He had such a big, happy smile all the time. Mark Holler, I called him from here in Afghanistan about a month or so ago to the phone number you gave us to make contact with him at the hospital. I spoke to him, and he was more concerned about my safety than his own health issue. Donna Wagusback Olson, Mike and I were diagnosed with cancer around the same time. We had not been in touch since high school, but he reached out to me when he found out about my cancer. We came in touch via email and occasionally by phone to see how each other were doing. He was a great support for me during my worst times. Larry Frazier, if, I can be, if it can be said of, it, of someone that the world is a better place because they were here, then their life was well lived, 
Wife, there is no doubt that our little corner of the world is a better place because you were here. You will be missed by many. It's Reverend Bill Dunn, Mike was well known and loved by all of us. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercies of God rest in peace and may light perpetually shine upon them. Janet and Amy Anderson, he had the most beautiful head of blonde hair, representative of the halo that crowns him as his family and loved ones mourn his departure. While we will not have the privilege of physically reuniting with him this coming June, his spirit will be among us. Ken Henson. Mike was a very special person, as we all know. He was always the type of person that everyone loved and admired. He always had positive things to say about everyone. Mike didn't have a special friend. He thought all friends were special. I remember a phone call from Mike asking me if I wanted to fly. Of course I wanted to fly, and I was quickly on my way to his house. Once I arrived, there he was on the roof of his home. <laughs> now, I wasn't too sure if we were fully understanding what flying meant. He had piled up styrofoam in his backyard that he was jumping into from the top of his house. I could still see him launching himself off the house. I never did get the nerve to follow, but I had a great time watching him and Tim. <laughs> and then last but not least, Brian Gant. I'll never forget the time Mike hooked that 42-pound drum that pulled us all around Christmas Bay before we were able to land it. Mike was such a fun-loving guy. I often used Mike's late-night garage encounter with his dad as a life lesson for my own kids. Be careful who and how you play jokes on. Mike told the account as follows. Mike had gone out into the garage late at night to get something without turning on the light. Mr. Harvard arrived home from shift work. Well, Mike knew his dad always walked through the garage and into the house and played to scare his dad. Mike somehow forgot, I guess, that he had uh, always carried his metal thermos and lunchbox. <laughs> so, when Mark, Mr. so when Mike grabbed his ankle, uh, he responded with that metal lunchbox. <laughs> Mike said that blow to his head almost knocked him out. <laughs> We have all been blessed to know Mike, and we have peace and peace.